Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. Hello, I'm Rob Lance. I'm a photographer. This is my gallery. Why don't you come in and we'll talk some about my photography. Hello, um, my name is Rob Lance. I'm a Boulder-based photographer. Uh, I actually grew up in Texas, San Antonio and Dallas area. I came from a big family, uh, four older brothers. Um, we used to take a lot of uh, family outings, hiking and doing things outdoors. And I, always kind of gravitated to grabbing the, the family camera and um, taking pictures while we we're out there. And that kind of morphed into a, a bigger passion, uh, photography in high school as head photographer, yearbook, um, ended up getting a photography degree at Art Institute of Dallas um, to uh, keep honing my skills. It was a, a really fun time. Uh, took a little break after college, didn't go quite into the photography career that I thought I would. Um, started a family, needed to make some money, so uh, started doing uh, some other jobs. Um, ended up starting a, a uh, technology business, uh, selling computer parts, and then went into um, you know, support and ended up being a software programmer for many years. Uh, that job kind of landed me in um, some place I never thought I would go, would be the Caribbean. So I lived down in the Caribbean for a while doing uh, technology, started a, a business down there as well, um, and got into a lot of underwater photography, kind of picked up my passion for photography again. Um, then finally made my way to Colorado. Um, that's really when I uh, embraced what I really wanted to do and the photography that I really wanted to shoot. Um, and that's nature and um, just the outdoors in general. I started hiking a lot um, with different groups when I got here, camera in tow. Um, really built the images that I wanted to show as a photographer and that I felt good as um, a photographer. Um, so I started getting more into the art community in Boulder, showing my work, finding different places to, to put my photography, to get out there in the public, um, and realized Boulder needed a uh, you know, a more permanent place for local artists to show and sell their work. And I decided it was uh, time then to start my own art gallery. So uh, we're sitting here in our gallery and wine bar that I started uh, coming up on four years ago now. Um, and really it was a spot to show and sell my work and feature all Colorado artists, uh, photographers, painters, everything. Um, so it's been a, a fun journey getting here. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy some of my images. We'll uh, talk through some of my favorites, some of my uh, images that kind of shaped my journey. Um, 
and I'll tell you a little bit about the, the story or uh, the process between those, um, those images. So this, this first one is really from those early hiking days that I talked about. Um, started doing a lot of snowshoeing and a lot of hikes up in Rocky Mountain National Park and frozen lakes were a big you know, draw to me. I really loved getting to these frozen lakes and photographing them. So um, this first one is Lake Hayaha. It's my favorite place on earth, I think. Um, I really love it. I always enjoy getting back up there when I can. And uh, the, the way the, the ice you know, makes that glacier blue and um, the wind coming down Chaos Canyon carves these amazing ice sculptures and different form, formations. So it's a pretty special place. Um, this next one's uh, the lock up at Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a um, you know, really windy day. I love weather that is uh, you know, kind of adverse. I think it proves for some interesting and dynamic photographs. So. And I did a lot of um, hiking mountains, 14ers and 13ers, and you know, trying to get to the summits. And so I took quite a few pictures up there uh, when I was first, when I first moved to Colorado. Uh, this one's called uh, Arapaho Red. It's up right up here in Boulder, um, north Arapaho Peak. Uh, just love the way the this, this summit vegetation, alpine vegetation, really just brightens up the scene. When I first started shooting in Colorado, um, very traditional, find your shot, compose it, take the picture, do a little post-processing. Um, that's kind of where I started. And you'll see here in a little while, that's not really where I ended up. Um, but I started thinking about what shots I wanted to do instead of just going out and um, taking pictures of what I see. Um, this one here, I call it Summit Bubbles. Um, it was the first 14er I climbed when I got to Colorado. And so I wanted to do something when I got to the summit. And so my idea was bubbles. I'll take some bubbles up to the top of, top of the summit and you know, have somebody blow bubbles and I'll capture the summit, the mountain ranges, and bubbles up in the sky. So really uh, pleased at how that came out. And um, so then I think from that point forward, I really started kind of thinking about what can I do in nature to compose an image you know, that I have in my head. Um, and of course, you know, play with some black and white, snowy day. Sometimes, you know, black and white will give you more um, drama than a straight color image. I love this image because of the way the wind was blowing. You know, I got it to circle around this top of a tree. So uh, uh, it was a really interesting composition with this natural circle in nature. This one. Back at Hayaha, um, it was one of my most popular images when I started shooting in Colorado. I don't love it so much anymore. Um, I think I over-processed it. Um, this was when I first started really getting into making my images more, um, more dynamic, more saturated. I think I went a little too far on this one, but everybody loved it. Um, so I guess it did spur me into my next kind of stage of photography and uh, my style. Uh, and here's the most iconic one uh, of my portfolio. Probably the, the one that most people know me for. It's my Boulder Flatiron morning. Um, one early morning, me and some friends 
hiked up the first and second Flatiron Trail uh, at dark because we wanted to see the sunrise come up over the Flatirons. I found this beautiful composition. Hey guys, let's hold here for a little bit. I had my tripod all shoved up into the rocks. Um, it's kind of hanging on the side of the second flat iron. And I took this image. You know, my friends are in the background kind of laughing at me um, because of the you know, contortions I had to get into to get that the right angle. Um, and then I went home and I looked at the image and I didn't really love it. You know, um, I kind of looked at it a little bit, played with it on Lightroom and Photoshop um, for a little, and then put it away. It was about, I don't know, four or five months later, um, bored one night, sat down on my computer again, looked at this image, 13 hours later, <laughs> um, I loved it. You know, um, I really got into masking and pulling the pieces out of the individual sections of the image um, and was able to create the vision I had when I was standing there, right? Um, it wasn't exactly what the camera picked up, but it was what was in my head. Um, and, you know, I wanted to get the light on the back of the flat irons just right and the, the light coming through this tree uh, i spent a lot of time on this tree just really masking out and pulling out all the highlights um, of it and i finally got an image that i love i put it out there and it, definitely my biggest selling image my most popular image it's a very iconic folder but a little different than you normally see the flat irons shot um, so that told me what people liked, you know, they liked images of scenes or places that they, they know, but shot in a unique way. Um, so I started doing more of that, trying to search out the places, you know, that I could put my little spin and my style on. As I continued to hike and um, try to find images and uh, create um, the work that I wanted to show and that what I was excited about, um, I started working with compositions. This image, Gem, La Gem Lake Winter, um, is actually a, a composition of two images, the foreground and then the sky. So I wanted, when I was up at Gem Lake, I wanted this nice, um, sharp image of, um, of the lake and the rocks behind it, properly exposed. But then I also wanted to get these clouds that were just like wisping by overhead. And I wanted to get them streaking, so I wanted to do a long exposure with just that. Um, could have probably done it with an ND filter, some things like that, um, but I don't think I had that equipment at that point. So I just did two exposures and then masked it and put it all back together back in the computer. This is mostly a, a straight shot. Just I uh, wanted to show some more pictures to you of my passion, you know, frozen lakes. This is up, uh, it's called Cracks in the Glass. It's up, uh, uh, Lake of Glass in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, another frozen lake in Rocky Mountain. This one is Dream in the Morning Light. Uh, this one's interesting because I hiked up with a specific image in mind. Uh, I was going to shoot backwards. I was going to shoot east to get the sunrise coming up over the lake. So I get up there before sunrise set up where I think it's going to happen. I've got my composition and everything. Sunrise really wasn't materializing, right? I mean, we're always at the mercy of Mother Nature. And um, so I quickly look around. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? This, this is not the image I want. And then I noticed that the sunrise wasn't happening to the east, but the colors hitting the mountains to the west 
and hitting the clouds over there were actually producing some interesting color. So I looked around the lake, re recomposed composition again, and um, found this beautiful patch of ice with cracks um, with the, the mountains in the background. I also had um, a light in my bag that I thought would be perfect. It was a really um, bright dive light, actually, scuba diving light. Um, and I used that to paint more um, color and bring out the texture right there in that foreground. Um, so that it turned, turned out just perfect. Um, that's what I called it, dream in the morning light. This image called Living Dead, um, not a planned image like some of the other ones I've just been talking about, uh, was during a hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, coming down this hill, this sloped, snow-covered field. Um, and I actually tripped. And after I tripped, I looked up and saw these trees, you know, this really cool composition. This, like arms coming out at me and everything. So I wiggled around with my camera and just laying on the ground, just looking up and it was like, got this composition and um, I, was, I was pretty happy with it. But you know, sometimes you just kind of fall, literally fall into uh, an image and just uh, good to be able to, to see that. Uh, another lake, Rocky Mountain National Park, Sky Pond, love Sky Pond. Um, been there a few times, uh, oddly enough, never in the summer. <laughs> Most people go there in the summer. Uh, I like going there in the winter. Yeah. Again, another sky pond, this one. Um, a little melting, gets a really um, cool color when some of those frozen lakes just start to melt in the spring. And just another uh, Another angle, sky pond. This is probably the, the last frozen lake I've shot. I need to get back out there and do some more, but um, pretty, pretty cool memory and experience on this one. Uh, I call it night, uh, the night before Christmas on Mills Lake. Um, I specifically went out there, I wanted to shoot Mills Lake Christmas Eve, the last light hitting Long's Peak, um, looking over Mills Lake. So me and my girlfriend hiked out there, waited for the, the light. Um, this one is a lot of composition. Uh, there's multiple images. So I took some images of the foreground and the mountains, um, and the trees, all before sunset so I could get really crisp definition uh, in those areas, have lots of light. Um, then as the last light was hitting Long's Peak, I took that shot and then I waited around till there's no sun so I could get a few stars up in the, the very top. And I put all that back together on the computer to create one image and um, one experience. Uh, interesting and interestingly enough, um, during that whole progression, I noticed this really cool um, reflection on the ice uh, of the light hitting Long's Peak. And so that wasn't there when I took the earlier shots of the lake during, you know, uh, right before sunset. Um, and obviously it was too dark to see it um, when I was exposing correctly for the mountain, the sun on the mountain. So created it in Photoshop. I made a copy of the mountain, flipped it over, stretched it, blurred it, and kind of rebuilt that reflection. Um, and I have no problem with Photoshop. I know sometimes it's a it's a bad word, but um, I think it's just a tool. It's it's how we create art, right? It's um, there's no rules in art, you know, as long as you're not trying to 
photography is a little different, right? Because there's this expectation of reality. And so I think if you, as long as you position yourself as an artist and not a documentary photographer, Photoshop's fair game. You create art, you create the vision, and it's just one tool to do it. Um, so this one is very much just recreating a, a vision I had in my head with um, multiple shots that I took on scene. So, and that's really what I like to do now is um, come up with an idea, come up with a vision, go out and shoot what I need to build that vision. Um, here we have um, an image. It's a version um, uh, of an image that I, I now print. It's called Winter's Warmth. It's of the Flatirons, very much snowy scene. Um, I went out that morning, really cold, I think it was like negative two degrees, um, to shoot the Flatirons with snow. Um, found this beautiful scene, but I really wasn't sure how I wanted it to feel. Uh, I was torn myself if I wanted it to be a cold scene or moody or, you know, just different things. So I played around with it in, um, in post-production. Um, and I wanted to show you two different versions. This was the first version I had, and it was very cool tones, more, you know, cold feeling. It's probably a little more accurate of what the, that morning was. Um, but I ended up not loving it. So I worked it some more and came up with this final image. There's a lot more warmer tones on the flat irons, which happened a little bit later uh, in the, the morning when the, the sun started really hitting the flat irons and making those warmer tones. So I used multiple images of the flat irons and the scene to kind of blend this fogginess that happened early on and the warmness that happened later. Um, and also if you go back to the earlier image, you can see the flat irons aren't as prominent um, they're there, but if you didn't really know what the flat irons were, I don't think they would play as well and come across. So you'll see the next image actually took a crisp, clear image of the flat irons that I took after the fog left, put it in there, matched it up with the kind of the fog um, covered flat irons and then move the opacity back and forth until I got the right amount of detail in the flat irons, but still having the sense of fog. So, um, so this one doesn't look like it is a composite. Um, a lot of mine don't, you know, I try to keep it look like it could be real, but I use some techniques to you know, enhance the, um, the feeling that I want to come out of the image. Um, but I do still shoot some traditional one shot, click it, do a little post-processing, dodging, burning, um, contrast adjustment, stuff like that. And this is a good one, um, a good point to, it's a good um, example of, of that technique. Uh, this one's, uh, Happy New Year, Boulder. I uh, went out and just got a little dusting of snow one New Year's morning. So I went out trying to find a, a picture that um, of the flat irons and of Boulder Mountain. I found this one uh, more grand, you know, the, the whole mountain instead of just the flat irons. So. So a couple years ago, um, ended up getting a, a van, converting it to four-wheel drive, and that really um, opened up the possibilities of getting to some really unique places um, that are a little too far to hike to, for me at least, 
um, uh, and it gives us the, uh, the ability to go someplace and really stay the whole night um, and and shoot. A lot I like to shoot a lot in you know in the evening or the morning or late night things like that. Um, this image I call Alpine Night Desolation. Uh, it was up um, this just this past year in the San Juan Mountains at about almost 13,000 feet. You know, we drove drove the van up there, found this just spot that really was a last, you know, last place we could stay before it got dark, you know, totally dark. Um, we were like, okay, this is just where we're gonna be. It's not exactly where I wanted to go. Um, but I, you know, after I was like, got over the, um, like, I guess, disappointment of not being where I thought I was going to be, you know, I, I looked around, I was like, this is actually really amazing. The, the moon started rising over the mountain to the east um, behind this cloud, and I was like, I can do something here. So I, I did a panoramic multiple, and it was four images across, um, and then I... Uh, took one just exposed of the the moon you know with these rays of light coming out from in back of the cloud and then I combined all that together and and of course you know now I'm starting to do a lot of this um, uh, a little section of the scene having some stars in it so I took one of you know some star field and put that in the right corner of the image kind of blend blend all that together uh, but it turned out really really interesting and uh, my image called amphitheater sunrise uh, taken right up here at Flagstaff Mountain definitely I think my best example of composite photography that I've done. Uh, this is, I think, four or five images taken over a five-hour period of time, 3.30 in the morning to 8.30. I sat up up there by the amphitheater taking multiple images of different parts of the progression of the sunrise. I had this idea the night before. You know, I was like, oh, what if I did the amphitheater and I had the city lights down, you know, the Boulder city lights down in the valley, but then I also had the sunrise and, and the sun and everything. Um, so the next morning I went up and I did that. Uh, I was lucky, the sun, sunrise was gorgeous, so many beautiful colors. Um, I set up at the exact right spot. Um, to get the, the sun peeking through this tree, give it a little more um, interest. And I just kept shooting every time the, the mood would change. And then I went home and pieced all those different pieces together and, and built this one scene. I, I like to say it's kind of like, it gives the viewer the whole sense of that um, five hour time period in one image. You know, it's like a, taking a video and compressing it into one, one frame. So. And of course, everybody, or most photographers in Colorado, you know, love, love the Aspens and love the fall. Um, a couple years ago, I had this idea of, I wanted to see if I could find a spot and create an image that had all the different colors of aspen, from green to orange to yellow, you know, and all the different shades in between. Um, so I searched a couple falls ago, um, searched and searched everywhere we went, looking for this shot. Um, never found it till the very, very end. We did a trip to the, you know, deep into the the woods in Pagosa Springs should have been past peak, um, but we found this one little spot that still had peak colors. We camped there that night. Uh, next morning, I'm walking around, 
looking at things, you know, seeing if I can find a find an image to take. Turned around, there it was. This bank of trees, yellow, orange, red, and a green one. No idea how that was still green, you know, way past peak. Um, but they were all there. So took the image, um, cleaned it up a little. Actually, my van was in back of that bank of trees. So I had to go in with Photoshop and, you know, clean out and take my van out um, between each of these little uh, tree trunks. But um, yeah, I was really happy. I was actually to, I was able to find that, um, that scene. So I was, you know, get these little wins sometimes. I call that one Aspen variegated. This is an old one, um, but still one of my more popular images. Just classic um, Aspen, Aspen Grove, in front of a field, um, in front of uh, some Colorado mountains. It's actually taken up in the, the Maroon Bells area near Aspen. And then the, the classic Aspen tree trunk image. Um, it is one that's done a lot, um, but I sell quite a bit of this one because I think I've done it, you know, exceptionally well. Um, you know, perfect focus, just the right amount of, you know, saturation boost. So you get, you know, those vibrant colors, you know, the yellows that you feel when you, you go out into a, um, an aspen uh, grove or quake. Um, but what I like about this one is I chose, you know, a, you know, a small aperture. So I got really maximum depth of field. Everything in this image is sharp. Um, and I think that works because, you know, it invites the viewer to really walk through, you know, if, if we had the trees in the background blurry, then, um, you, your eye would just stop at that front you know, section of trees. But because I've made the depth of field you know, as large as I could and got every one of those trees in the background um, in focus, it, it invites the viewer just to go and look at every one of those trees and walk through, um, through the trees. I started doing uh, a lot of Milky Way photography. Um, I love the stars, I love the universe, I love everything that's out there. Um, so I started doing some, some more Milky Way images, but I never wanted to do just take a picture of a star or a nebula or, or whatever. Um, you know, I wanted to create a piece of art, so I always look for a, a scene um, and then the Milky Way's always just a, an element in it, you know, the backdrop. Um, this is one of the first ones I did, did it out in uh, the, uh, the Tetons uh, on a camping trip, you know, did the, the classic uh, tent glow image in the foreground and the Milky Way in the background. Um, that one was a little interesting. It was pitch black that night and there were definitely eyes all around me in the in the uh, the trees, I'm assuming they were deer. So, who knows? <laughs> so, uh, I guess a few years ago we had a comet. You might have uh, heard about Neo Eyes. So, I wanted to take a picture of Neo Eyes, and of course, you know, Boulder. So, I want to get it above Boulder, went to, went to one of my favorite spots up there by the amphitheater on Flagstaff one early morning. I was able to capture this image of Comet Neowise going over Boulder. Um, did a little light painting on the rocks in the foreground, give it some interest, and got the city lights down there uh, as well. You know, still very much a composite. Um, foreground, neo eyes, lights, and then the, the clouds 
um, with some color during sunrise. So I don't do a lot of architectural photography. Um, it's not something I specialize in. I don't think I'm particularly good at it, but it's good to get out of your comfort zone sometimes and do something new. So um, hiking down by Boulder Creek, went under a bridge, saw this seam, um, set it up, and I was actually pretty happy with it. Um, blurred foreground of the, the water coming through, uh, and then the, the lines that are mimicked on the top and the bottom of the image. I think it works. This is actually one of my first composites. Um, did this in um, Chautauqua, flat irons, beautiful uh, sunset, make the clouds pop. Um, but there was this moon up there as well. So um, you shoot wide angle. Um, the moon always becomes like super tiny. And so I decided, what if I just zoomed in on the moon, took a separate picture of it, put it in the scene, um, and blended it so it felt more like what I saw. Um, so that's what I did here. And this one, fall evening at the lake, took this up at uh, Nederland, Mud Lake and um, composited it the same way I do most of the time. Before sunrise, takes, or before sunset, take some images, get the right exposure on the elements that are gonna be in shadow um, after the sun is set. Uh, in this case, it was the row of aspens on the other side of the lake. Um, but then we also had these little ducks playing right there in the floor, foreground. So. So I saw them, so I spent a lot of time taking pictures of these ducks and waiting till they, they ducked under just the right moment so you'd get a really interesting ring. Um, so I took all those images and put them back together. I uh, spent a lot of time cleaning out um, just gunk floating in the, the top of the lake in the reflection. Uh, I think I spent a few hours just zoomed in, you know, cleaning out every little floating piece in the lake. Every once in a while, um, I actually take a trip outside of Colorado. Um, there's still so many things I want to photograph and see in Colorado that um, I, don't, I don't leave the state a whole lot. But in this case, I went to San Francisco, I'm going to do some wine tasting. And um, of course, I always take my camera around and find different things to, uh, to shoot. Saw this on the, the Fisherman's Wharf. The sun was just setting underneath um, the Golden Gate Bridge. Actually had to climb up on a little pillar um, to get the right angle. Uh, I think I had my girlfriend holding me. Um, camera, I'm holding on to another um, sign, trying to get up high enough to get just the right angle so the sun was just under the bridge and through the masts of the boat. Um, I was pretty happy with this one. Um, another uh, flat iron image. Uh, uh, this is on the back side of the flat irons. Um, used a lot of dodging and burning on this one. Uh, to try to get that um, right feel. Again, you know, I'm all about um, what feeling do I want to show the user or the uh, viewer. Um, in this case, I just wanted this last light on the back of the flat irons. A lot of times, photographers they have to suffer suffer for their work. Um, you know, we don't have the luxury of of uh, coming up with an idea and sitting in a nice warm studio and uh, painting a picture. Um, we have to actually go out in the elements and, and capture the, the light that was actually there. Uh, in this case, this is, um, it's called Foothills Wonderland. 
taken right up here on um, in the foothills of Boulder around Wonderland Lake. But total whiteout, snow everywhere, um, not perfect hiking conditions, but of course I go out and uh, try to find um, a seam to, to capture that moment. And I love this one just because it is mostly white, mostly negative space, and just a few trees to, to create the scene. With my passion of Milky Way photography, um, I had to do Boulder, flat irons with the Milky Way. The problem with that is Boulder's a city, it's near Denver. It's hard to get a good Milky Way image in Boulder. Um, I don't like using, even though I do a lot of composites, I don't like using composites from different shoots. You know, I, I like to take all the images for a particular um, piece of work all at the same relative time. You know, it could be hours span, an hour spans, you know, a span of hours, but um, all from that time. So for Boulder, I had to wait for the right moment. And one night I saw it was a particularly clear summer day or summer night and um, saw that you could actually see the Milky Way. So the next night saw that the weather was gonna be the same way. Um, I went out 3 a.m. That was the right time for the Milky Way to line up where I wanted it. And it happens to be the Le least amount of light pollution. Um, so I went out there and was able to capture this beautiful image with the Milky Way over Boulder. I used the city lights to illuminate the flat iron, so much longer exposure for the flat iron piece. Then it was a windy day, so um, this flowers in the foreground, um, I had to use flash to really stop those so they'd be crystal clear. And again, put it all back together in the computer. It's one of my most popular images as well. This image called Raptor Misty Mountain. Um, took it going up near NCAR, doing a little hiking, a very like foggy, misty day. And I saw these birds flying around, um, up around the mountains. Um, so I ended up taking a picture of them and enlarging them a little bit. And so it would be uh, bigger in the scene. So they'd be more a part of the actual scene instead of just some specks back near the mountain. And, uh, yeah, I think it turned out really nice. Um, kind of a Japanese feel with not quite um, black and white, not full color, not sepia, somewhere in between. A lot of times I like to use light painting. It's where you use a flashlight or you're, you could use your, the light from your phone or the, a camera flash. And you can actually paint the scene by exposing little parts of it um, when you have your shutter open for a long time. So I do that with night photography a lot. I take an image for the Milky Way and then I light the scene with whatever light I think will, uh, will work at that moment. This one was taken at Trail Ridge Road where I actually had to walk around and light each one of these rocks individually um, just because they were put so spread out. I couldn't get it all done in one lighting painting session. I would have to leave the shutter open for 15 minutes while I walked around. So I just focused one, you know, one image per rock, got the right exposure, and put it all back together in the computer. So, and interesting enough, this, uh, shooting star right there in the center going to the Milky Way. A lot of times when I'm taking Milky Way shots, I'm taking multiples, you know, over, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, most every time I get some kind of shooting star in there. Um, it's rare that I don't. 
this one actually got it that that night but it was opposite it was going the other way i didn't like it that way so i flipped it around and um, made it more interesting <laughs> Long exposures are always fun. Um, taking water with long exposures um, can be you know, an interesting effect. This image I call time trail. Um, it's a long exposure of water and the way the, the bubbles in the water streaked around these rocks, um, I saw it was pretty interesting. So I did a long exposure and got this whole trail um, moving. I didn't love the rocks a lot on this one. It ended up looking kind of weird. So I did a lot of post-processing, dodging, burning, to make the rocks you know, not as apparent a part of the image. I really wanted the streaks in the water to be the focus. This is another image of um, the Milky Way and using composite photography to create this you know, um, vision that I have in my head. Um, it was a trip out near Silverton and I saw during the day, I saw this waterfall coming down through the mountains. I knew kind of where the Milky Way would be that night. Um, so I, I got this idea, what if I make the Milky Way line up with the waterfall in kind of this um, continuation, Milky Way into the waterfall, down the mountain. Um, so I set up my camera at the right position. Uh, I use apps to tell me when when the Milky Way will be in a certain spot. Um, so at that time, I took the Milky Way, where it would line up, got that exposure, left the camera there, and then in the morning, when the light came up, then I could take a nice shot, you know, with the right exposure, and get the hillside and all the definition in the trees and get this waterfall. Um, and I play with color balance to make it not look off, blend it all together, and then I you know, came up with waterfalls from Stars and Magic. During my time in the Caribbean, um, even though photography really wasn't a focus when I was there, uh, it was still a hobby. It was still something I loved to do. So um, I would take my camera out on on walks through through the old parts of town. Um, this one, Dancing in the Doors, is probably my favorite. Um, above water picture I took uh, while I was down there. Um, found this beautiful, decrepit building. Uh, still had the iconic Caribbean doors, but it, the paint peeling off in between the doors has this like carnival scene. I'm pretty sure it was some old stickers or something they they decorated the side of the building with. Um, and when they tore it off, weakened the paint. But um, it, it gives a really great effect. And, uh, but mostly what I did when I was down there was underwater photography. Um, I was underwater oh, probably half the time I lived there. <laughs> um, always snorkeling, took my camera. Um, so taking pictures of fish, like this one, these French grunts, um, jellyfish, you know, it, it's really interesting trying to make a composition underwater because um, everything is moving. You know, your subject's moving, the water's moving, you're moving. Um, and you end up getting into a, a lot of really interesting positions. You're like upside down, hovering over, you know, a ledge, taking a picture of some creature that's moving around. Um, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's challenging, but it um, makes it interesting. There's a lot of times I was 
taking pictures underwater down down there and i'd be thinking i was like this would be really interesting doing this above water <laughs> um, and there's always really interesting creatures and colors down there this uh nudie branch um these little worms they're always really like decorated like different colors and stuff sticking out um they were a lot of fun to find and photograph and of course of course iconic beach scenes those were everywhere you know trying to get the the water to flow um just perfectly and capture that right moment um, and again so many really interesting creatures this one this uh penderson cleaner crab um, or shrimp um, i always love taking pictures of them because they're translucent see-through uh, this one I happened to find with um, a sack of eggs underneath them something i started a while ago i started getting back into the studio um, had this idea of playing around with water drop photography. And so I did a series of images, but I didn't want to do just water drops like everyone else does. Um, so I combined my kind of passion for um, the sky, the Milky Way, the stars, the universe, and I figured out a way of consistency for the water drops I actually used milk and made them milk drops. But when they collided, they kind of look like galaxies. So I started doing this um, galactic liquid series. I'll show you a few of those now. They're milk drop collisions set in front of some of my Milky Way and Starfield photography. A lot of fun to uh, play around with different techniques in the studio. So the last series I wanted to leave you with here is my uh, Eclipse series. Um, something I started working on um, back in 2017 when the solar eclipse, the full solar eclipse went across the United States. Um, I had to shoot it, you know, and, um, as most photographers probably did. Um, it was about a year before the eclipse was happening, I started planning it out, um, doing test shots of the sun, building the solar filter I wanted, um, and finding where I wanted to take the picture because I didn't want to just take the picture of the eclipse. I wanted a scene. I wanted a story. Um, did a lot of digital scouting, uh, looking on Google Earth and looking at different pictures of places along the path of uh, totality. Uh, I knew I wanted a lake, so I wanted to do this scene with a mountain lake with the eclipse um, over top found this beautiful lake up in the Tetons, Lake Marion, 10,000 feet, um, pointing the right direction. Um, I actually saw through you know, Google Earth pictures and other uh, pictures other people have taken of the lake. I saw this log, so I knew exactly where I was going to stand. I knew the scene I wanted. Um, so I have this log over the lake with the, the progression of the eclipse mimicking it. Um, so I did it. I got my backcountry permit to go hike there. It was a, um, it was a, ended up being a three day backpacking trip to get up to this lake and get back. Um, but everything ended up working perfect. You know, perfect weather. You know, brought my kids along to carry all the gear. Um, that was the, the start of this Eclipse series that, um, that I've been doing now. Um, so I started with the, with the solar eclipse in 2017. Then in 2019, 
I started doing some uh, lunar eclipses, uh, blood moons. In 2019, there was the super blood wolf moon, so I was able to continue shooting eclipses. I took all the techniques that I learned shooting the solar eclipse, you know, doing two cameras, two lenses, you know, two different tripods, uh, one wide, wide angle lens to take pictures of the scenery, and then a telephoto lens, you know, to take all the progressions of the eclipse. Use that same technique and shot my second image of the series. Um, I also learned that weather is an important part of all this. Um, you only get one shot at these, right? You know, they only happen at that scene, that particular way, once. Um, so I ended up planning multiple locations. You know, um, this particular one in 2019, I had three different locations across Colorado. And then that morning I said, all right, which, which of those locations are gonna have the best chance for um, good weather? Um, pick this one over 11 Mile State Park in the South Park area near Fair Play. Got there, it was total clouds. <laughs> I was like, ah, I picked wrong, but I kept shooting. And by the time the eclipse actually was at totality, crystal clear skies. So I was able to, to build the image that I wanted. Um, then this uh, past year uh, in May, there was an eclipse and perfectly lined up uh, over Boulder. And so I could take my iconic boulder scene of the flat irons uh, went to that same location and shot the eclipse so I kind of combined that you know iconic image of mine of the flat irons and my new um, eclipse series and was able to capture this um, boulder flat iron eclipse image and then this last November we had another full lunar eclipse. This one was going to be the last one until 2025. So I knew I had to capture this one because it was my last chance to increase this series for two years. Um, again, the weather was not great in most places that I wanted to shoot. Um, I wanted to do another lake image with the eclipse in the background. Um, ended up having to go all the way to near Leadville to Twin Lakes. I was able to capture this beautiful series of uh, moons going through the lunar eclipse right over Mount Elbert. So got the moon setting over Mount Elbert and with the reflection in the, the lake like I wanted. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at now. So unlike a lot of photographers, I don't worry too much about equipment. Um, I, I do definitely feel like the equipment is secondary to vision and technique. Uh, obviously you have to have a quality camera and something that can create the image that you want. Um, but I am a Nikon guy mostly just because I've always been a Nikon guy. Um, I started um, shooting Nikon film cameras and then went into the digital world. Um, definitely a digital photographer, obviously that, you know, the type of work I do um, is a lot easier with digital than in film. Um, but yeah, um, full, full blown Nikon guy. Um, Nikon Z is what I'm shooting at the moment. So. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of walk through my journey as a photographer and um, looking at some of my favorite images. Uh, you can see a lot of them on display at our gallery um, and on our website, ourgallery.art. Thank you. Thanks for spending some time with me talking about my images. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.